sound good? You can turn it up now because we're finna get loud and proud in this place. This is going to be a little different than any fishing seminar you've ever sat through. And don't get it down too low, I feel all romantic up in here. It reminds me of being in jail, so the more light I got, the better. When it gets dark, I get nervous because a few of these guys might have been with me in cell block C. We're going to talk jigs today. We're going to talk simplicity. You guys, uh, you wouldn't be here if you wasn't avid angler, so I'm sure you know uh, the Elite Series and what we do for a living and how much we travel and trying to catch bass every day. And what I've learned in the last 17 years is the more simple, the better. Anybody agree with that? You go to the tackle store, they got 31,000 colors jigs, right? You can sit down in a chair and look for hours. It's irrelevant. Doesn't matter. Only thing that matters with jigs is presentation. That fish ain't studying all that. I promise you. Now, we think he has. For years, I've had a roommate that would count tinsel strands. He'd be down there going, this one's got 51 strands of black and four strands of blue. If you're thinking like that in tournament fishing, most of the time you're starting out behind an eight ball because fish are not that smart. Anybody agree with that? Yeah. They little bitty fellers. <laughs> they got a little bitty brain. We don't need to give them too much credit. They are not the enemy. I hear people all the time say, well, the fish know. Y'all probably know somebody like this. Every time I say, them fish know it's Saturday. <laughs> you think they got Instagram? <laughs> they sent a big message out, a mass text on Friday. Hey, tournament starts tomorrow. Half of you get on the pads, half of you move off that shell bed. I need the other two or three fish to suspend right in the middle. And every now and then, one of you just jump for no reason to scare them. <laughs> they stupid fish. They live in the water. They react to their environment. We want to think like that as fishermen. The more credit you give them, the more harder you make the puzzle. It is not that hard. Now, apparently sometimes on TV, I look like an idiot because I can't find five of them. Y'all agree with that? Some days you lose. Uh -uh. My jig is pretty much brown with a green chunk, brown with a green chunk, <laughs> black with a black and blue chunk, and when I get real freaky, I swap them. Oh yeah, some days I just get crazy and put the wrong chunk on the wrong one. I put my chunk in a one gallon Ziploc bag, there'll be 500 of them in there the same color. I ain't changing. It's worked around the country for 17 years, it'll work for 17 more. Now yeah, you can get all fancy and put a little green pumpkin or a little blue in there like this one Hank Cherry give me right here. It's all sexy looking. But when it comes right down to it, I just need a brown jig. Most of the time when you do that, you wasn't taking line up fast enough. When you set the hook with a jig, real. Like there ain't gonna be no tomorrow. Like you in the fourth grade sharpening a pencil by Becky Johnson, you need to work that pencil sharpener. <laughs> That's what I call it. Y'all ever got down the pencil sharpener ground where you just grinding it in? <laughs> I don't care. I mean, if he hits it out there, so no, I'll just point the rod. I mean, I've got the highest level fluorocarbon I can get on there. We all buy the best equipment we can get, right? I got 25 pound fluorocarbon. Why am I going to finesse him around and talk to him? Uh-uh. You in my house now, Jack. Pencil sharpener. Remember that. Straight to the boat, in the carpet. The longer he flops, the more he swims, the more time he has to get off. Me and him can talk in the bottom of the boat. It's nothing like holding one in your rain suit and him going <laughs> You got him, right? Y'all ever been that guy? Cold, throw a four-pounder in your rain suit and he's all up in your face. Well, he ain't back in the water, is he? I catch them so fast, put them in the live well, they start jumping in the live well because they forgot they were caught. The guy said, what's wrong? I said, he's mad, never had a chance to pull. Set the hook, jerked him up in the boat. My philosophy on that is, all jokes aside, if you set the hook and just kind of hold that fish, that's his environment. Most of the time you flipped around a piece of cover. Wind the fish out of his home. Don't let him run around a limb. Don't let it... Don't give him a chance to do something to, to mess you up. Get the fish in the boat. Hey, I'm Pete Gluzek. And I'm Mike Iaconelli. And this is Bash University TV. Welcome to Bass University TV, an online video training course where you'll learn champion bass fishing techniques from pro anglers Pete Gluzek, Mike Iaconelli, and their talented special guests. Everywhere I go in the country, I'm trying to use these techniques because I catch big fish that way. From on the water to in the classroom. We want to use that bait to help make that area even smaller and really, really find that sweet spot. You'll learn sound techniques and strong fundamental bass fishing skills. You want something that's got a nice limber action, 
that's going to allow you to build pressure and keep those hooks pinned against that fish's mouth. Watch hours of video content on multiple topics at your own pace for a low monthly fee. Cancel at any time. Hold on, because you're going to catch some big <laughs> fish. Information is power in the sport of fishing, so learn from the very best. That's a key theory in all of fishing. Subscribe to Bass University TV today. Man, does it trigger a lot of strikes. Here's the part that you're not going to hear anywhere else. This is the Bash University TV exclusive.